All right. Uh, this is a game in the RU251, the German uh, tier 8 light tank. Uh, really good tank, fast, no armor, decent gun. Uh, fast in a straight line, anyways. Um, and so what? one of the things I really wanted to highlight in this particular uh, game was was a couple of things. One, there's, there's no artillery. Two, is that their comp is much heavier than ours, right? They have mouse E75, 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 IS-8, right? Whereas we have basically an M103 on our side. Uh, so that's something uh, where uh, when, when you play a map like this where there's a lot, there's going to be a, a narrow confrontation at some point. Um, oh, you expect their... The, the weight of their team and the armor of their team to sort of uh, give them an advantage. And so when you read the map, you want to look for areas where their heavies are congregating and you basically want to avoid uh, a head-on confrontation there. Uh, one of the nice things uh, about being in, in a really fast tank is that you can cross over towards that uh, J3, J4 area pretty easily. They made some changes to this map, uh, which make it a little bit easier for this for this south spawn to cross by removing <coughs> a bush in that uh, E3, A4 area and by reducing the... Uh, there, there used to be a little trench back there that you would hit and that would slow you down. Um, so all I'm going to do here is just a little spotting run, just a little loop, and uh, even if there's already, uh, all you have to do is get behind this rock right here, and you'll you'll be already safe. But in this case, that's that's not a problem. Their T54, I want to prevent him from uh, lighting our guys. So uh, as long as he's lit, uh, that's bad for him, uh, especially since we're going to have a lot of guys uh, in that area. And then I can basically focus on uh, anything, lighting anything else that's there that sits there. Uh, I just need to be careful not to get shot myself. Our T62A is in a position where he can spot the the one two line, right? And I see that they have the the KV4 and their IS8 coming down this way. I know the IS3 is on this side. And you look at our dispersion; we have a pretty even dispersion over here. Um, our T95 is still back over in this H7 area, so we we need him to to move up. But the T95 can potentially be really clutch in a game like this again. Because their team is uh, really heavy armor-wise, and also because there's there's no artillery, he just needs to actually get up uh, and get in the game, which, of course, for the T95 is always a problem. So we have a number of guys down here, but see how they're all pretty light, and I see the E75 pop up now. Um, so this is a side that we're probably going to lose, right? You look at this comp, we were basically trading head, up, head on here. We've got an M103 is the only armor that we have on this side. Uh, our Centurion 7-1 is going across, and our Patton is, is still back in the... Uh, uh, that G5 area. They're, they've started to push down a little bit into that C7 area, but we've got uh, a couple of nines down there. So if, as long as you control the middle, you can play this uh, position that I'm about to play and get shots into these guys if they um, don't immediately push around that corner. Most teams don't actually push around that corner. Hopefully you don't bounce off of an FCM T like I just did. And again, I'm all, all at all times right now. I'm watching this encounter down in the southwest because as soon as we lose that, we, you need to get out of here. You can't, you can't be hanging out back here. Um, but there's, there's some potential here for us to be able to save our, our, uh, uh, or, or uh, help these guys on the north side um, clear out at least the bottom area we see that there's a t30 up top that t30 is going to be difficult to root out uh, if our guys push forward. Uh, so that's something that we have to keep an eye on. In the meantime, both of the E75s are down here right now, so we know that they have two E75s and the IS-8, IS-3 combination. Uh, so we want to, to look out for that. We see that their mouse has now, just now been spotted on the ice road. So they have a pretty even dispersion at all. Our T95 has moved up a little bit in E7, which is why their T30 has been continuously lit. The T30 is probably going to struggle to to damage the E75 from that side. Uh, but you'll see that we're bleeding over on this side. Uh, the 1390 is backing off. The patent has moved across. And so one of the dangers of this particular thing is that, especially if you're these guys right here, as I've been saying, uh, this whole time, you know, we're probably going to lose this southwest at some point just because of the head-on matchup of armor against a lack of armor uh, and, and the fact that they have health uh, and can dictate the, the situation uh, is going to make it difficult for us on that side. So, like, if you're these guys in the middle, that Centurion I3 pattern combination, you ha you have you, to realize that once we lose over here, their tanks are going to show up where the, where myself and this T62A are at, and then this position right here becomes very very bad. And so now this T6 our T62A is up by me, so we have 5100 and 103 on that side. Um, so we need to start thinking about about getting out of here um, and so they're going to start pushing right now and so 
you can recognize this push, right? They still got mostly full tanks. We, we're, we're pretty light. Uh, the C-75 already fired at our T-62A. The T-62A, for some reason, drove behind me to cut, cut off my retreat. And then now it's 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 time to go. They're, they're pushing up to a position of no return. And the reason why I can stick around this long is because uh, I'm, I'm really fast so I can get out and I can get out both way either way if I wanted to I can get out that way or I can get out this way I'm gonna go through the bowl because these guys need to clear out these guys can't stay here right so they have to push forward so if I have to go over there and push into this ISA for them then so be it uh, I will do it um, if you're in a slightly slower tank this 5100 had an opportunity to get out he should have gotten out probably about 30 seconds earlier he also could have gone either way he's a fast enough tank to do so even if you're a slow tank um, you should recognize that situation and, and be able to get out so then now see these guys are pushing up here which is fantastic because that means that their e-75s and, and their heavy tanks which are coming around that southwest are not going to be able to shoot them in the, in the rear which is always a good thing um, and uh, we actually have map position on them so we've cleared out this side faster than they've cleared out their side just just barely um, and given our position on the map we control towards the cap so I just want to make sure that they're not rolling out towards our cap so what you want to be able to do is Figure out where the guys are. Their E-75s are camping. Uh, it's going to be difficult for them to get to the cap. The T-71, however, is going across there, so the T-71 can put cap pressure on. We don't have anybody in position to uh, to stop them. Uh, it's going to be really difficult for me to get across to that T-71 with the E-75s there and the KV-4 presumably crossing. So the correct decision here is to, to push the cap, right? So they got a T-30 mouse. Uh, you'll need to clear out the T-30 at the very least because he's far enough forward. The mouse is far enough back that if you have three guys on cap, uh, as long as you're far enough back, uh, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, our, we have an M46 patent T-32 up here. Neither of them are very good players. But the T-95 is decent, and he's coming through. Um, and I know I can cross here as long as I'm not lit because the T-30 won't have the turret traverse in order to, to catch up with me. Um, and these guys are able to take out the T-30, which is good. And then so now all we have is this mouse back here, but we have three on cap, right? We have four guys back there. Uh, so, but you know, all you need really need is three on cap and, and hiding. So what I want to do is I want to just make sure that this mouse can't push up easily. I can't physically block him just because he could literally just push me around. And you'll notice that when I sidled up to him this time, I sidle up to him much, uh, more smoothly and gently and so I do not greatly damage my tank um, and so it, as long as he's going to sit back here and not shoot our guys on cap that's great the 1390 uh, should have probably stayed on cap the patent should have definitely stayed on cap especially you want at least three guys on cap especially if you know it's going to be a cap race you cannot uh, do what these guys have done especially if you're not going to deal damage um, I, I was pretty much the only one that ended up dealing damage to that mouse, which is unfortunate. And so now we've got a lot of cap points. We've still got a cap lead, right? We see that the E-75s uh, might be coming back. And uh, one of the things that all I want to do is I want to get in front of the guys with the cap points. I don't really have that many cap points. The T-32 and the T-95 have most of the cap points. So I want to be in a position where if somebody comes around that corner, they're going to shoot me instead, of, instead of them. Um, and they just get there too late, right? It's it's one of those things where they didn't win this side fast enough. And then once they realized that we were pushing in over here, all those guys had to turn do was turn around and immediately come back instead of drive up here. Uh, and and we, it would have been much, much more difficult for us to cap. Um, if our Patton and or 1390 had stayed on cap, all they needed to do was stay back. We had the, the T-30 and the, uh, the mouse pinned. Um, it's really important, I think, to if you can, to get a light tank across uh, or a fast tank across um, and uh, be somebody who actually screens the cap, uh, ideally someone who wasn't already, you know, didn't already have a lot of cap points invested. And so this is a sort of an example of uh, watching both the minimap and the composition of the tanks that you have um, in recognizing that they had a lot of weight, a lot of armor on this this one two line. And that if you're gonna peek and poke with, with uh, medium tanks and, and tanks with, with very little armor like the 5100, they're going to win that exchange almost every time uh, unless they're, they're extremely poor players, right? That's a huge advantage for them and you need to recognize it if you're, if you're these tanks here and, and not peek out of that, not put yourself in, in, a, in a bad situation like that. And similarly, if you're these guys that, that moved across over here, you have to recognize that if you're going to lose down here, you can't still be right here. Otherwise, when those E-75s get there, right, if those guys were still down here, it, you know, you just get free shots. I mean, it's just free free shots right into, right into the rear, similar to what we got on these guys over here, except 
at a much closer range. And then cap pressure, important, especially once you know that you lose that side. We didn't have an option to go back, really, to, to, to reset the cap, um, which is, uh, but in this particular situation, that's fine because we had enough tanks and far enough forward and we had cleared out enough of their defense that we could we could outcap them um and again you know i just want to point out that, that we could have outcapped them without even killing the mouse um we, we probably still would have needed to kill the t30 as long as our guys actually stayed on the cap which which they did not for whatever reason um and a lot of times you just you want to take no chances in that that particular situation And so now if you look at the stats, um, pretty much uh, as expected, uh, that Centurion 7-1 that ended up going through the middle uh, did a good job of, of, of dealing damage. The T95 that drove across the bridge uh, ended up doing a, a good amount of damage. He took zero damage from the T30 as he, as he crossed the bridge, right? He, well, he took zero damage from anybody as he crossed the bridge. Uh, and it took him a long time to get into position just because he's slow. But, you know, basically once he rolled onto cap, you know, the game was uh, effectively over because it was going to be very difficult to, to wedge that guy out, particularly if we cleared the ice road or screened the ice road properly because their T95, did, all their T95 had to do was not stop driving, just keep driving in, uh, and he could have gotten some resets. Um, but they still would have needed to have come back from their, you know, their E75s, KB4, IS-3 would have still needed to come back earlier um, because the mouse would have went down eventually. But the mouse could have gotten enough resets where that could have actually been relevant. But he, he stayed too too far back. And our team didn't help either by driving off the cap, and that's, that's sort of the problem uh, with... Uh, pub players it's you have to recognize when you need to cap and uh when capping is uh is not the best thing for your team okay uh and so i hope that was helpful for playing this map um and identifying uh composition mis mismatches and and how to either use it to your advantage if you're their team or try to minimize their advantage if, if you're our team and uh, thanks for watching